covering mine Stephen Benoon you're watching Israeli News Live friends we have been up pretty late today it is after midnight here actually 1 a.m. in the morning uh, check time here very serious news that is breaking very thing there's some things that have happened today that have majorly concerned me uh, something that President Trump said today that just bothered me to no end and, and I appreciate President Trump. Let me just clarify that with you guys because his love and stand for Israel, I really do appreciate him. Uh, but I am concerned of some of the intel he's given. I am concerned also uh, after a statement that he made today that our military is not being directly ran by the President of the United States. Uh, very concerning. So I'm going to get into that in just a moment, uh, especially in light of the fact the latest news coming out, NBC News stating here that U.S. may launch a strike if North Korea reaches for a nuclear trigger. Now they're not talking about sending off a nuclear weapon towards the United States or Japan or South Korea or anybody else for that matter, just for doing a nuclear weapons test that's done underground. Okay. The U.S. is prepared to launch a preemptive strike with conventional weapons against North Korea should officials become convinced, only convinced, that North Korea is about to follow through with a, with a nuclear weapons test. Multiple, multiple senior U.S. intelligence officials told NBC News. All right, now guys, listen. I've said all along, Kim Jong-un has really brought a lot of this stuff on himself. You know, mainly because he's talked about using his nuclear weapons, doing a preemptive strike. You know, I, I realize having a nuclear weapon is pretty serious business to begin with. But does he have the ability to carry through with this threat? I don't really know. Um, does the U.S. have the ability to knock it down? I believe they had to do a completely 100, 100% because it is a high altitude type of missile. If they're going to launch a, a ballistic missile, even to Japan, they have the ability to knock it down. But knocking it down in the, in the nuclear bomb detonating in the atmosphere, yes, this could cause you know, great, great devastation, at least electronically, in that region of the world. All right? But at the same time, China and Russia is trying to get North Korea to negotiate. And suddenly, China is willing to do major um, uh, sanctions against North Korea to try to get them to bend. Now that's something that the, the U.S., even if they have their forces there, and understandably, I understand the U.S. Have, having their forces there, every right to do so, I appreciate that, not against that at all. But at least maybe to see if China can't get North Korea to, to, to budge there. But there's some things that are going on. I mentioned this the other day, and it's something that really concerned me, and that was this, uh, you know, that we already know that North Korea, excuse me, China has... Uh, the Def, uh, uh, Dunfang 41 intercontinental ballistic missile, they've had it there since last year in the northern province of China. They're close to the North Korean border there. Uh, there's, there have even, they have made a makeshift military base up there, the Chinese have. They have moved now uh, 150,000 troops there. Some people are saying that's not true. Believe me, it is true. There is too many sources out there that are saying it, and I'm talking about legitimate uh, news sources from Russia and other par uh, parts of the world there that are, that are not considered uh, bogus news sites there that are saying they've got that kind of soldiers there. The latest movement here that uh, was reported here by uh, Lorenzo with already happened was this video that he shared here on his, um, on his uh, Twitter account, right? Now at first I didn't know what this was. I was kind of interested, wondering what in the world they're doing there. Then uh, he found this particular article here on a Taiwanese uh, site, and this was very interesting. If you just hit Google Translate, because I definitely don't know anything about Taiwanese, uh, says the three groups of Communist Party of China to the DPRK border to carry Russian anti-aircraft missiles. This article here confirms that what was going on in China, that they're moving another huge contingent, uh, contingent of forces there, to the uh, border with North Korea, this time with the S-300 missile defense system. And the S-300 uh, PMU-2 air defense missile is not only for defense, but also can be reversed for attack type of missile. Now, are they there to work with the United States, which is what I suggested the other day, but again, I could be wrong, guys. I don't know. I can't say 
or are they there to defend North Korea from a U.S. led attack? That's what could be as well. And I don't know, especially in light of with the way that this article just read here that I shared with you on NBC News. NBC reporting that the U.S. is going to do a preemptive strike if they even attempt to, even if they think they're going to try to test a nuclear weapon, just for testing it. And I think with China trying to show good faith with really putting on some major sanctions, when I talk about major sanctions, they wouldn't even allow them to ship their coal to, to, to uh, North Korea or anything. They really started buckling down on them. So is China getting ready to defend North Korea from the United States and Japan? Remember, China and Japan are arch enemies. They always have been. They're over this, over this uh, big issue over in the uh, South China Sea as well. So it could be that China, they don't want to engage the United States, but they might try to defend North Korea. They even talked about being uh, North Korea's defender if they would just give up their nuclear weapons program. But I don't know how that's going to go down. So I'm really watching that closely to see how this turns out. Now, again, another thing though that happened that, uh, that was really concerning as well was today I was catching this, uh, I caught the tail end of it while it was still live, so I was able to, to listen to the entire uh, broadcast where President Trump is meeting with the I-85 bridge first responders. Now I'm not talking about this because of the first responders, but what caught my attention was at the end of this broadcast, and, and Washington has edited out the comment that was asked by a reporter about the launching of the Moab bomb in Afghanistan and whether or not the president authorized this action. They edited this out so that when it was there for the public's viewing now, you don't get to hear the question, you don't get to hear the president's response. And I can understand why they edited it out because no doubt there were others that realized the way the president responded was not the wisest response that could be given and it really concerned me greatly. And I appreciate President Trump, don't get me wrong, uh, you know, there's some people who think, you know, do you not like President Trump? You know, he's, he's anointed, he's called, he's this or that. You know, I'll tell you something. I appreciate President Trump. I don't think he's a Cyrus, and I don't think he's a Darius either. You know, the building of the Third Temple, yes, the Pope of Rome wants the Third Temple built. I'll agree with that. I, I do believe that President Trump plays a key role in prophecy in Zechariah in helping protect Jerusalem. Okay? Now, whether or not he gets to stay in office long enough to continue that mission that he feels in his heart to do or not, I don't know. But this right here, this question and his response shocked me because the way he answered it was very loosely. They asked him if he authorized that strike of a Moab bomb and he doesn't answer it directly. He skirts the question. He talks about how we have a great military and I have already authorized them to take care of things. In other words, he give his military like a blank check. That's the way I took it. They have a blank check. Just go take care of business. Do whatever you got to do. He did not authorize directly. At least he did not answer it in this way. Unlike, say, for example, President Bush, when he talks about 9-11 uh, and then he starts the war over in Iraq, he says, I have authorized the U.S. Armed Forces to uh, strike Iraq with an air campaign and he makes it very clear what he says he's going to do. Don't say I agree with it, but, but you know what I'm saying? The president is clear about what he says. President Trump was not. And you may not, you might think, well, that's not, that's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal because you have to understand friends here at Israeli news live. I mean, I'm an American first. I love Israel. That's my home. That's my country because I am Jewish, but I'm, I'm not, you have to understand. I'm, I'm equal though, even on my own people. I'm not for the Zionist move to take over the entire Middle East as the, not the true Zionism of the Jewish heart that wants to return home to see the Mashiach, uh, the Messiah. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm against the Rothschild type of Zionist globalist agenda to overthrow the entire Middle East. No, I'm not for that. All right. But at the same token though, what I'm seeing right here is something that's very alarming. And when we study our news, we research from our perspective in the Russian language, Middle Eastern language, the Hebrew language. We study these different news broadcasts to see what's going on in the other part of the world. Things that you don't normally get to see unless you just turn on RT. 
issues, but we're even before RT in a lot of issues as well because we go deeper into that. Because why? My wife speaks Russian, my father-in-law speaks Russian, and Hungarian, uh, Slovak, Czech, Polish, you know, all these languages from the former Soviet bloc areas. So we look into those areas in order to try to get a feel of what's happening. That way we can share that type of information with you. It gives you a heads up of what's happening in this part of the world. Some people think, oh, they're just paid by the Russian propaganda. You know, that would really be nice if Russia did pay us, but they don't pay us. Believe me, their economy is suffering so bad, their, their Russian ruble is only worth maybe 10% uh, of what it was before. No, it's the kindness of the people that, that appreciate our news broadcasts that support this. Definitely not Russia. All right. So the thing is, though, we try to be objective and honest in what we're showing you. Now, as I was troubled about this, not even looking to see if anybody else caught on to that, I just thought that was just Steve that saw this. No, no big deal. Nobody else did. The next thing I know, I begin to search news to see what else is going on before we come on to air here. And then I come across this article right here on TASS News in the Russian language. And the first thing that they're doing they're wondering, they're saying on here, Trump did not authorize the Moab strike on Afghanistan. The Russians notice it. See, this is why they edited it out in that video. They're trying to minimize the impact of his statement. Even let's say if he did, maybe the president did authorize it. Or maybe he just said, take care of it, do what you got to do. But it's the way he answered it. You understand what I'm saying? That's what causes the problem. Sputnik news. Trump refuses to confirm he authorized use of a giant bomb in Afghanistan. Now, they actually quote him, so I can give you a more accurate quote, quote about it. Trump skirted a reporter's question concerning whether Trump himself authorized the strike. Uh, uh, he pivoted by saying, everybody knows what happened. And that's what he said. He followed up by stating that, what, uh, what I do is authorize my military, okay? Then he stated, Trump said he was very, very proud of the military for its successful event. We have given them total authorization. And he, he goes and says a few other things. That's why they've been so successful today, uh, lately, Trump added. If you look at what's happened over the last eight, uh, eight weeks versus what happened over the last eight years, which I, that's, I remember him saying that as well, he continued, you'll see there's, there's a tremendous difference. Is that because he's just giving them a blanket policy? Now, that's the way it looks like he's doing that there. And, and you know, for me, that, that is a little bit concerning. That is putting your trust in your military commanders uh, that they can just have a blank check and do as they wish. Is that going to end up getting us into a third world war? Well, you got to remember, uh, General Breadlove who was a commander over in the, uh, the European theater, wanted badly to go to war with Russia. Barack Hussein Obama just wouldn't sign off on it. Back in 2014, when Ukraine was going on, Breadlove pushed hard to get Obama to go to war with Russia. Maybe that's one of the only good things Obama ever did was avoid that war with Russia. But at this rate right now, if the military commanders have that full authority to kind of start pressing buttons and use whatever kind of bombs they want to use when they want to use it, we could end up in a third world war a lot faster than what we realize. And that is concerning. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier today, and this I will say is alleged, uh, this is a Russian language strike force US led coalition near Deir uh, Azor. Uh, led to the mass poisoning of people, according to Syrian news agency, the Sana published material, which refers to the drawing planes, so-called a U.S.-led coalition strike. Um, and as the article goes on to say that it hit a, a weapons uh, 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 facility there, and there were chemical weapons inside stored by ISIS. Whether or not this is actually true or not, uh, this supposedly is the scene of that location there. That has not been verified. Russia, though, has sent in drones to try to assess to see if this really is so. Uh, so Russia, even though they have reported it, they're not taking it uh, completely as 100% as of yet uh, until they can try to get more evidence as well, which is what should have been done even in the case of the accusations on Bashar al-Assad. I think what Russia is doing is what exactly what the United States should do as well. 
uh, with Assad is to investigate it before just la la uh, launching a lot of bombs over in that area there. I know they did a target a, uh, a, a an air uh, airstrip that the uh, Syrian government had, uh, but there were uh, civilians killed in that bombing as well that were not related directly with that as, as that more of that came out later. Uh, so it's the same thing here. Uh, if indeed this is a chemical factory that killed a bunch of people there, nonetheless, it's being investigated to see if that really is the case, not just taking Syria's word for it. Russia is trying to investigate that the best they can because that is an ISIS-held territory uh, where this event occurred uh, as well. Um, anyway, uh, that and another thing that I thought was interesting because I was concerned too about, uh, you know, how is this going to go was the thing that... Uh, Paul Begley was speaking about there's supposed to be a breaking news that should be happening, in fact, any hour now from Washington. Something that's supposed to be coming, breaking, coming out of there. Uh, there's supposed to be a major news that the U.S. is going to bring out. I was thinking it might be a strike on North Korea, but I also thought that perhaps maybe uh, President Assad is willing to uh, step down. Maybe not at first, but willing to step down once they can settle and bring peace to Syria. Uh, he's even talked about that before anyway, so that's not really a new thing if it was done that way. Uh, he's willing to do new and fair elections, as he calls it there. Uh, but at the, at the same time, uh, I, I was wondering, could it be that Russia is actually trying to work with the Syrian president in order to get this to try to de-escalate between the United States and Syria and Russia? And because more and more Russia is becoming very isolated, the entire world against him for standing with Bashar al-Assad and trying to come up with some kind of plan for Bashar al-Assad uh, to uh, step down from power, maybe in a negotiated settlement as time goes on. But uh, this latest move by Russia giving the Syrian government 10 Sukhoi Su-24M2 bombers uh, after the U.S. destroyed about six or seven of their bombers, which were older bombers to begin with, kind of lets me know I don't think there's any kind of negotiations going on at this time. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. That concludes it for this afternoon. Uh, by the way, also, I'm Agina Dodd. He is running uh, once again for president. Uh, that's something that's kind of thrown a lot of people for, for a twist right there. No one expected him to do that. Uh, this was something that, uh, that he was not supposed to be doing, according to uh, the Ayatollah that, that demanded that he not run for this again, or, or at least insisted that he should not, but he's thrown his hat in that, in that, uh, in that arena to be able to run for the race against uh, Rouhani. Uh, and of course, if he gets in the place instead of Rouhani, uh, Amagina Dodd, then there could definitely end up being a war. Rahani is a little bit more uh, level headed. Amagina Dodd is a wild card for sure. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Here